Hi guys, so I've got something to show you. This is it. It's the Raspberry Pi B Plus. So this is the new Raspberry Pi that's just come out. This one was sent to me by Farnell Element 14, I think they are as well. Um, and they asked me if I'd unbox it. It's a pretty small box, isn't it? There's not gonna be much in there apart from the Raspberry Pi, I imagine. So we will have a look and I'll talk about some of the differences between this one and the Raspberry Pi B. Uh, and also put them side by side and we can look at some of the features. So this is the box it comes in, so let's waste no time in getting it out. Uh, it comes with a little sheet, safety, whatever, don't need that. And uh, so here's the board. Now people are going to complain, so I'm going to take this out uh, here, and I'm not all statically safe and stuff, but I'm just going to hold it by the USB port, so that should be fine. So let's get rid of that. So the first thing you'll notice is there's no video composite out. Uh, that's been integrated into this 3.5 millimeter jack just here. So that's audio and video out at the same time. We've also got more USB ports. So there's an extra two on here uh, and they've been aligned on the same side of the board. In fact, the whole form factor has changed. That might not, uh, the, where all the ports are has changed. So the form factors remain the same, except your, uh, the RCA connector thing that used to be up here is now integrated into there. So you've got one side of the board here that you connect things to, and one side there you'll connect things to. Another thing you'll notice is the USB's gone. Uh, it's been replaced by this micro SD slot here. Now, I was sort of worried about that because I thought, do I have a uh, micro SD lying around, and do I have a way of getting uh, Raspberry on to it. Well, I've already got the SD with Raspberry on, on it for the old Raspberry Pi, but I'm going to have to find one of these uh, SD cards large enough, the micro SD, to put uh, uh, an OS on it. There are also more GPI O pins here, so there are 40 there rather than the, the 26 usable ones that they had before, which is great. It means you've got more outputs, but it does mean that this whole head has changed so that you've got to uh, get a new cable to plug on there I guess. The Raspberry Pi now features a different power supply setup so you see just down here this is where the power goes in through this uh, little micro USB. Um, it uses a switching power supply, a switching regulator to regulate that 5 volts down to 3.3 volts that this requires um, and that saves a lot of power. Um, they've stated that it will be 0.5 watts to 1 watt and actually that's an awful lot and there's also a low noise power supply for the audio out as well. Now some people complained on the Raspberry Pi before that they were hearing some artifacts or hissing noise when they were playing audio and I experienced the same thing. I got some noise on my audio. Uh, that should eliminate that to some extent. I mean it depends what you're putting into it to, to what you get out but it will remove any of those kind of uh, issues. So let's have a look at this in comparison to the old Raspberry Pi. So here's my Raspberry Pi, it's in its case at the moment, uh, and it has a, uh, a cable for the GPIR. Uh, let's pull it out of its case and we'll compare it. Alright, so here they are together. You can immediately see that we've got uh, more USB ports here uh, and we're losing these two here and actually combining them into one. Uh, you've still got a full size HDMI and uh, you'll see over here there's the linear regulator that it used to use uh, for the power which has now been replaced with all the switching regulator here. Uh, we have uh, the two connectors just here the same. I believe they're the same actually I should probably look that up but as far as I'm aware, those are the same connectors, even though they look slightly different. Uh, I haven't taken the plastic off the top of these ones because I haven't needed to use them. Now you'll notice that the, uh, the screw holes here, the mounting holes, they've also moved on this board. So there, there are actually four of them on here and only two on there. So this is going to be a more stable platform. And you'll see that the, the GPIO is a lot larger along here. So 
this cable that I'm used to uh, using on my Raspberry Pi will not fit properly on here. Uh, I don't know if it will actually go on at all. No, it's getting stuck on these pins here. So I can't use this, uh, this cable. I'd need to modify it in some way in order to, to attach it onto there. Now this went to my GPIO, GPIO breakout board, uh, which is now useless if I was going to be using it for this one. So some of you might be thinking, wait, doesn't that mean things that I bought for my old Raspberry Pi aren't gonna fit on the new header? Well, I think in some cases it will work. Some cases they will fit. Uh, however, in other cases they're not going to. If you'll notice, this uh, GPIO runs all the way down here and it terminates at this uh, USB, these two USBs. So the height along here is higher. So along there is higher. So you may run into issues where your board that extends, maybe a bit too far down here, will touch one of these USBs. It also means that these aren't in the way, which is good if you wanted a larger board across here, but it might mean that some of your uh, interfaces won't work. So some of the, the shields that you've got for these won't work. Similarly, cases aren't going to fit this one, or at least they won't um, allow you to use all of the ports. So this is the case that I have for my Raspberry Pi, and you'll see that on the new uh, board, it doesn't break out these bits here. In fact, I don't think the case would fit because it's meant to fit flush with these. So uh, on here, it, uh, it fits perfectly. But on this one, which they're more flush with the board, it, uh, it won't fit over because of this one here. So your cases aren't gonna fit. Cases are cheap anyway, so that's fine. But if you've designed your own, you're gonna have to redesign it or buy a new one for, for the Raspberry Pi B Plus. And I don't know what their availability is yet. Now the board is uh, $35, I think. Uh, it's priced the same as the old Raspberry Pi, uh, which is great. It means that no one's gonna be spending any more money to upgrade. But if you just bought one of these, I think you're gonna be a bit annoyed that uh, this one has just come out. Uh, without too much of a rumor about it, in, in my opinion, I didn't know it was coming uh, until I was contacted by Element 14 to say, would you like to review it? So uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to try and set this up with a micro SD card. Right, I've got it all set up. All I need to do is plug in the power, turn on my television, and put this micro SD in there. Now I've used a small SD card reader, one of these to, to put um, an OS on there. I've put noobs on there, so we'll see how it goes. Right, so we're all set up and ready to go. I've formatted the USB and I've put uh, noobs on there. So we're just gonna plug in the power and see what happens. Right, has it detected it? Hope so. There we go. So it's, uh, it's creating a recovery partition and then it's gonna create another partition that I can store files on. So this is the new noobs build. Okay, the mouse doesn't work on this surface, brilliant. Let's try something else. There we go. Right, so what are we looking at here? Raspbian. Okay, I just select one, I guess. So I guess um, Noobs comes with all of these ready to go. So let's just install that. Uh, warning, this will install the selected operating system. That's fine. Yes. Let's see how long this takes. I made speed this up. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna speed this up and I'll come back to you once it's finished. Right, so we're 100% now and that has taken 16 minutes to complete. So I don't know whether that's the speed of my SD card or not, but it does say it's writing at 1.9 megabits a second. Um, so it's 
quite megabytes per second, sorry, so it's quite likely that that's a limitation of my SD card. Perhaps it's an old one. I'll have to have a look and see what class it says on the front of it. But I did think it was a class 10, uh, but who knows. Uh, so we'll just wait for this to finish up. I'll speed through this bit, I think. Right, so it says OS's, or singular or more, I guess. I didn't know you could install two. I guess I could have selected more options. Has been successfully installed. Uh, also says here, for recovery mode, hold shift. So I'm guessing this is going to restart now and take me into the command line interface. So it seems the Noobs install was just a graphical user interface for installing your OS. So I could have chosen any one of those, or multiple, and have it dual boot perhaps. Uh, but I've chosen the one that I'm familiar with, which is Raspbian. So I'll be using that, which means that when this is finished loading, all I need to do is type start x after I've uh, selected this. So ensure that all the SD card storage is available to the OS. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Uh, your partition layout is not currently supported. Probably using noobs, in which case your root file system has already been expanded, so that's good. So let's just go to finish. And then we've got the command prompt down the bottom there. And all I have to do is type start x, if I can spell it correctly. My uh, keyboard and mouse have already been recognized. So hopefully, I can see an active light on the on the uh, Raspberry Pi B Plus. So it's loading up. There we go, and we're in. Finished. Now I haven't connected this to the internet. It's not got a Wi-Fi thing plugged in or an Ethernet, so we're not really going to do anything in here. But I will say that uh, it has been 20 minutes since I first started up the Raspberry Pi. Since it went through that install process with Noob, so you do have to sit down and wait for a little while. There's no real user interaction in that time. Uh, and everything is automatically picked up, my keyboard and mouse. So actually it's worked out rather well. So some final thoughts on the, uh, the Raspberry Pi B+. Um, it's great, I like the additional features. There are some things you need to be wary of. You're going to need to get yourself a micro SD card and a way to write to that uh, from your computer. So just one of those little card readers that I showed you. Um, it will need about 20 minutes to set up if you're using the Noob software, and you may not be able to use your peripherals that you've already got. Uh, so your little shields and stuff that you already have for your Raspberry Pi. It's not going to fit into any standard Raspberry Pi cases either. So where they've got all the cutouts for the USB and stuff, that's not going to work out for you. So you will need to get something new, make your own. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some in the shops very soon. In fact, I imagine there's already some available. Uh, and your cables, you'll need to get some new ones of those if you want to use the GPIOs. Unless you're just using single... Uh, cables, in which case you can plug those in just as easily. So what, what are the benefits of this? Well, you've got better sound, you've got more USBs, USBs? USB slots, um, you've got, you don't have that SD card sticking out the side, it's, uh, it's recessed, so you've got the, the micro SD, so that's really useful, especially with those cases um, that we've had in the past where the, the SD card would stick out the side, which means it could easily get knocked and it would damage the connector. Power consumption is great on this as well. I mean, I haven't tested this, but if their claims are true, which is um, 0.5 uh, to one watt more efficient, then um, that's pretty big for portable applications. If you're gonna be, let's say, sending it up in, uh, in a balloon to, to go do some high altitude stuff, then you don't need as much power. You don't need to take as much weight with you. You've got more outputs with this from the GPIO, but you've also got more USB slots. So, in fact, it's better connected. It uh, also has a better format, form factor. So you've got uh, 
you've only got things on two sides that you need to connect to, which is really useful. If you're designing a project, uh, you can make the box smaller. You don't have to have as many holes in whatever box you've got. So it's very useful. I really like the B+. I think it's, it's a nice upgrade. They haven't changed the processor or the RAM, but it means that it's going to run on the software that's already available. People don't need to change their programs that have already created. Anyway, thank you very much to uh, Element14 for sending this to me. I really appreciate it. I'm going to be porting all of the projects I've had on a Raspberry Pi over to this one, and then I'm going to give away my Raspberry Pi to... Uh, I don't know, actually. I'll find some. In fact, my local um, hacking group can have it, and they can use it. Uh, so thanks a lot.